ಸಹನಾಂಗತು ಸಹನೋ ಬುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾಭೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ನಮಸ್ತು ಮಾಭಿಷಾಭೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಂತಿ ಹರಿಯೋ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಎವ್ರಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ವೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಡ್ರೀಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಯು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ದ ವೇಕಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ thoughts emotions relationships ideologies etc similarly when you go to the dream state you assume the position of a dreamer experiencing the dream objects dream beings and dream emotions and when you go to the deep sleep you assume the position of a deep sleeper and experience nothing how do you know this is nothing because when you wake up you say i had a sound sleep no that's how we identify that we don't have to go into this you know this rapid eye movement test and all those things you know vedanta doesn't rely on any of these you know equipments for all this it's a simple thing because you come out and you report and because you report it is nothing vedanta only repeats what you report as this deep sleep is a state of nothingness and in the waking and dream you go through pleasure pain joy sorrow etc when you go to deep sleep what do you experience there is no pleasure there is no pain actually there is no pain since there is zero pain you call it as all blissful but that is not the bliss of realization remember that state is not that state of brahman remember that relatively there is no pain that's about it absence of pain is what you experience as the pleasure joy bliss in a limited sense in the deep sleep state because brahman will not come out and give a report i had a very good experience to whom he is going to give that explanation so that state is is not brahman it's not part of brahman then what is the bliss that you are experiencing in deep sleep is the bliss of non recognition of any objects beings emotions thoughts relationships since there is nothing of this there is no pain therefore we infer what we infer this saying waking and dream state is a state of pain samsar is painful is it so deep sleep is a state of bliss when it is referred it's not the bliss of realization it's a bliss of ignorance ignorance of what you are ignorant of yourself also you are ignorant of the world therefore it is total ignorance 
the total ignorance it is zero but then there has to be some rudimentary thing there isn't it to recognize that ignorance you are aware of nothing in deep sleep it is nothing but you are aware of it that awareness is different from ignorance that awareness is that same awareness with which you get aware of the dream world dream objects and beings relationships emotions thoughts it is that same awareness with which you you become aware of the waking objects waking beings waking emotions waking thoughts waking relationships so that awareness is constant that awareness is what is referred as i i had a good sleep you said isn't it had a very good sleep and that sleep is a state where you get so relaxed why you get so relaxed there because you are very close to god there because godhood is a state of only joy no pain here 50% if i have crossed no pain at all in the waking and dream you experience pleasure pain pleasure pain pleasure pain both you go so you are far away from that here 50% therefore it is more blissful you are going more closer to brahman so therefore it is this state the deep sleep state is what is referred in various ways as karana sharira causal body this uh, anandamaya kosha in another context is referred as avidya is referred as anadi is referred as vasana etc you can't explain what it is because it is unmanifest therefore it is also referred as anirvachaniya brahman is also anirvachaniya vasana also anir anir anirvachaniya you can't explain it is beyond any comprehension explanations are all this now you go through these three states and then you assume three different personalities then the question comes is which is true then to which the masters the shastras come and say <coughs> beyond this three there is a fourth state until and unless you reach that state the fourth state you will not be discontented why you will not be discontented because all of us are seeking constantly pleasure only difference in all of us is the manner in which we seek the source through which we seek pleasure will vary one person may seek it through well another person may seek it through health another person may seek it through knowledge another person may seek it through relationship another person may seek it through name fame money recognition appreciation acceptance etc you can me there are as many number of human beings are there so many ways of seeking is there 
But one thing is not sure. What is it, sir? Through all the things that we all seek, pleasure. Nobody gets bored with pleasure. Right. I don't understand. That's why, you know, no one goes to astrologer and asks. I don't know. For the last 35 years, I have never had any problem. Is there anything wrong with me? You know, not you, you go, go to a psychiatrist. Isn't it? The fact that you are fixing an appointment with an astrologer, the fact that you are fixing an appointment with a psychologist, psychiatrist, Understood is what? The fact that any one of you call me, that means what? You are in trouble. Correct? There is only one fellow in Bangalore who calls me to give some good news. You know, so far, I have never received any call from anyone. The call, the call itself is only for what? There is a problem. So I know. Can we come and meet you? You know, immediately I know, yes, there is a problem. No. What is this? You never get bored. Why? You, you are not comfortable in the position of pain, sorrow, agitation. I say carefully if you observe the duration of your anger will be for how long? The peak. Hmm? Anger peak is for how long actually? If you see, it is only for a few moments. It's, it's just few seconds. If it stays for a few minutes means something extraordinary. Even the deepest sorrow of your life is what? Only for few moments, isn't it? Prasanna Vairagya says, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. That is why, you know, in our tradition, we don't keep husband. You know, when the lady is, you know, delivering a baby, husband will not be here, around. He will abscond. Why? The pain is so much. Now, of course, it's all cesarean only. 90% is cesarean. So, we don't even recognize what's happening. So, it doesn't make any difference. The, you know, the pain is so much so. One look at that fellow, he may even kill him actually. Next time you come near me, this is what he will say. For how long? Same way, you know. You know, smashan again. When you see, you know, dead body, you you also say what? Like this, you know, impermanence. That's it. Okay. But what happened to that intensity of that sorrow? Intensity of that anger. You can't stay there for a long time. You see? You... Your, your, your mind will slip out of that quickly. You can't stay for a longer period of time. Why you cannot stay there for a longer period of time? Because it is disturbing. It is agitating the mind. Anything that is agitating, you cannot stay. Contrast to that, the sense of gratitude, it's a compassion, once you have tasted the compassion, once you have tasted surrender, once you have tasted gratitude, once you have tasted love, you can stay in that for rest of your life. No problems. You can, you can keep loving that person rest of your life. No matter what happens. Now, now, don't, don't say immediately, I'm also having love, I love you, I love you and all, please. All that is attachment. Whatever that so-called love that we claim is all attachment, that's not love. 
love is independent of all those things i will still feel the same how you are able to feel you can stay in that state of gratitude rest of your life you can stay in that state of devotion surrender faith rest of your life you will not have any problem why because all those things makes your mind calm soothes it doesn't agitate that state gives play play pleasure so what are what is why is it that you are able to stay here is for long is because it is pleasant there is play 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 pleasure there here there is pain agitation mentally there it is very pleasant soothing it is here it is agitating therefore you cannot stay you move out this gives an indication is what he is explaining your natural state when you come closer to your natural state you can stay there without any pressure one two more you move away from that natural state there is an internal pressure in that object to get back to its natural state now all of us are pressurized to seek fulfillment right those who have experienced tasted that fourth turiya state they all have in single voice all of them had proclaimed that they have attained that state of fulfillment fulfillment means fully filled there is nothing more to no more room to add it's fully filled from all sides nothing more to fill him that state so first thing we understand is these three states are known to you but then we get a confusion in terms of which state is real now is waking real dream real deep sleep real then the masters comes and say no 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 there is a fourth state and once you reach that fourth state it's a state of absolute fulfillment where there is no internal pressure to seek any more pleasure joy happiness etc that is a state now any where you experience that pressure to seek fulfillment what is understood you are not in your natural state now apply this rule to waking dream deep sleep or you if you say deep sleep is a state of bliss sir fulfillment joy then why are you getting pressure is to move out of that state hmm why do you move out like people go no from here we are people go for one trip they go to himalayas they call it as pilgrimage it is not pilgrimage actually tourism right only difference is you go to temple 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 that's the only difference location is different that's about it but it is it is just a tourism and they go and they come back and they tell me they describe you know you should see those people you know there is 10000 feet height no facilities nothing you can't order you know pizza 
they will not deliver no amazon delivery nothing look at their house look at this but you can see in their face they are so happy i so jealous you see that then why don't you stay there why you come back hmm? in fact when booking itself you do booking with the return ticket only will give me the answer the first thing they ask is when are we coming back first confirmation they give that is the return confirmation confirm the return ticket is it is not even though you call it as a very pleasant one then why don't you stay there is so joyful no so pleasant right but there is something in you which will not allow you to stay that similar way you go into deep sleep you call it as a state of bliss but you can't stay there there is something which is forcing you to get out of it you can't permanently be there now none of these three states gives you this all the time what is our life as what we understand as our our ourselves today rumba stressful sir you know really stressful life is stressful this pandemic has put you know life completely as though before pandemic your life was so blissful you know i asked you in it you know in january 2020 you are you are complaining stress 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 march you know shut down again you say was stress 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 that i have a whole thing crash you say was stress 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 now we are having you know, what is that they say economy is in a v shape recovery i don't know what is the meaning of that a v shape recovery the pace in which you fall the space in which you bounce back doesn't matter what the recovery recovery but it is recovering also the fellow is saying very stressful sir like this when you have to work there is stress when there is no work for you they say go home no job again stress for you life is so stressful and we attribute the reason for the stress that we are experiencing is because of the situation because of this because of that because of this because of that person because of this happened that happened or this did not happen but this happened in this way this should have happened that way all this is what we believe as the cause of stress now vedanta says you are pressurized you are under pressure why you will be under pressure why because you are not in your natural position until and unless you get back to your natural state which is the fourth state you will go through stress less or more that's about it that less stress is what we call as pleasure more stress is what we call as pain tolerable palatable manageable it's okay when it goes beyond manageable is what is when we start calling it as pain and is a stress stress vedanta says there is no external reason for you to feel stress this is the first lesson krishna teaches in the gita utastva kashmala midam stress kashmala why you are having into this kashmala why are you getting into this man in the state of crisis in a crisis why are you getting stressed out now we get confused sir 
straight away we will disagree with krishna first statement of krishna will disagree what is it yes stress will come only in crisis no in normal conditions who will get stressed who will get stressed in a crisis only you get stressed and krishna's question is in a crisis why are you getting stressed which means what stress and the situation has no connection then stress is because of what you can read you know one of the most popular topic wherever you know go people keep on asking this question how to handle stress how to handle stress how to handle stress how to handle stress am i to tell this to everyone and even if you say this to nobody is going to listen everything are what nonsense you have to tell them i am under stress what to do under you know stress it get back to your natural state not this will not be appealing to all of us do pranayama will be appealing to all of us change the job will be more appealing you shift your house will look more appealing correct the other person will look far more appealing corrections a problem you know corrections like yesterday you know one of her don't person was talking to the builder is telling me is asking you well, two years back he you know invited me for the inauguration of his you know building i thought was it going my everything is fine there so what is it and only yesterday we you know day before we had finalized for uh, occupation certificate i said for, for, for what he said i have to shell out 25 lakhs to get the occupation certificate i tried my best why two years for that i said because i was not willing to pay now what is it corruption yeah. now if i go and tell him get back to yourself get back to the fourth state he will give one whack to me and say get out nonsense you are talking that's why you know vedanta is not popular you know it is not a very popular one people because people cannot understand the link you know okay you guys are talking something which is not practical they will say it's dismissed as an impractical philosophy straight away that's why this is utastva kashmala vidam vishamaye samupasta this is unbecoming of a man this is not the deep behavior of a human the dignity and prestige of a human is to understand that situations the world doesn't cause stress then what gives me stress i am not in my natural state what is my natural state this how do i know this is my natural state next question come no sir what is the way to understand how do i know what you are saying yeah these masters are saying that these masters are claiming there is a pressure experience i understand all this but what i am not able to capture is the fourth state and the moment i reach the fourth state i will but what is the logic how do i know that that's why immediately he moves on to the four means of gaining knowledge right this is a very very basic one we are you know he is giving here you know but it's a it's a huge topic by itself in fact it is one of the shastra itself is that nyaya you have to what he is discussing here is 
the entire essence of Nyaya Shastra it is captured and given to us in these two pages. Right. As I keep telling people, now if you have to study Vedanta Kritis, this reading this one book is equivalent to reading minimum 40 books. You know, this various methods of gaining knowledge. What are the ways in which you gain this knowledge? The means to gain knowledge are taken essentially four means. Of course, there are multiple other things also is there. You know, subsections are there. There are further elaborations are there. In fact, there are people who take, there are 10, not four valid means. There are 10 valid means. And there are people who say not 10, there is only eight valid means. There's another group who says there are only six. Another group says four. Another group says three. Another group, like for example, this uh, materialistic philosophy, Charva, they accept only one. There's only one valid, you know, means to gain knowledge. This. Then you have, you know, uh, Buddhism, like Buddhism accepts two things as valid means. Then others. So here we are taking four. Pratyaksha, Anumanam, Upamana, and Agama. This Agama is also referred by people as Shabda. No, Agama. So there are four means to gain knowledge. What is the four means? Pratyaksha means direct perception. Then Anumana means inference. Upamana, comparison. Agama, tradition. These are the four valid means. This Charava does take only the first one. Only Pratyaksha Varam. I'll explain whatever the Pratyaksha is. Okay. I can't go into the detailed analysis of Pratyaksha. Right? What are all the components of Pratyaksha and all that if I start? All of them. No. So, very basic one we'll study. Subsequently, when we go to other texts over a period of time, you know, we will do it in detail. Right? Right now, you don't need that much of detail. Right? There is, you know, this Pratyaksha, that Pratyaksha. Pratyaksha is direct. You see, you understand. That's all. This is Pratyaksha. Whatever knowledge that you gain through your senses. Now you have five senses. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. Through these five senses, you perceive the world and you gain knowledge of the things around you. So that is Pratyaksha. This Charavatis, this materialists, materialism, they accept only Pratyaksha. And Buddhism takes two. It accepts Pratyaksha and also it accepts Anumana, inference. And then you have systems like Sankhya, you would have heard of. There is a Sankhya school of thought. They accept three. They take Pratyaksha, Anumana, and Agama, Shabda. This Nyaya takes four. There are four ways of gaining knowledge, you say. That's that, that is what we are studying now. Now Vedanta accepts this four. So that's why we are studying this four. And there are other people who, who say Vedanta takes even two more beyond this four also. There are six 
been taken by Vedanta. There's another, you know, method is also there. And then there is another school which takes eight Brahmanas. This is uh, Auranika. They accept it. Eight schools are there. Then uh, uh, Shaiva Siddhanta takes ten Brahmanas. So each one accepts. But rest are all, you know, whatever we are studying as the other things, they are just the subsets of either uh, Anumana or Upamana. The other things, all subsections of it. That's why all that is getting included here. So that's why we restrict only to this four. So there are basically, there are four means of gaining knowledge. Right? Now, subsects we don't have to worry about. So let's focus only on the basic idea of what is protection. I'll just give you the basic idea first and then we will go to the text proper. Pratyaksha is the knowledge that is gained through your senses. That is the very, very basic, the first elementary source of knowledge for all of us. Then there is a study, there is a question we ask. What is knowledge? Right? There is an analysis for that. What is proper knowledge? What is real knowledge? And what is false knowledge? Both are knowledge, but it is false. Like very popular example. When I give example, things will become little easier for all these things. You know, you, know, you would have heard this example you know, many times in the Vedanta classes. When you see a rope and you take it as a snake, what is that knowledge? That's a wrong knowledge. You taking that as snake is a wrong knowledge. Right. Then you need to know what is the right knowledge. What is the right knowledge? When you see the subject, you understand those things, a thing, as the thing is. You understand a thing as the thing. Okay. That is called right knowledge. So whenever we use the word knowledge, what is understood is right knowledge. So knowledge means right knowledge only. There's no necessity for us to keep on qualifying it every time, saying that, you know, uh, are you gaining right knowledge or wrong knowledge? Knowledge itself means right knowledge here. But in the study when you go to, we also define right knowledge wrongly. Same way, there is a right means and the wrong means also. Right. All the study, they have to do first. That is why studying, before studying Vedanta, they study certain preliminary texts, preliminary Shastra. The Pramana Shastra has to be studied first. On which, what is very important is this. So there is a way of education here. In our, you know, traditional study, there is a, there are steps they give. First thing you have to study, they say, is words. Learn words first. Niruttam is referred as Nirutta Shastra. Now, we don't have to worry about the Sanskrit words and all that. Okay. Then, after learning the words, you have to learn grammar. Second one. You have to study grammar. If you don't know grammar, then you will you will not be able to understand the things pro 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 properly, nor can you communicate things properly. In a famous example they give as a joke, you know, to the school teacher. You know, 
the girl wrote a letter, suicide note. She wrote, I have committed suicide. And the teacher comes and gives one whack to that girl. Yes. I will commit suicide. He's not worried about, you know, have committed or will commit. That's the, you know, his argument was that. Because you, are, you have to communicate, no, properly. What you are thinking, you should be able to communicate, for which you need grammar. If you don't have grammar, then it is not possible. And also to receive anything, they are going to be sending out their thoughts only through words. Correct. Through words alone, communication is going to happen. So when they have to communicate through words and collection of words, it has to be precise and as clear as possible. Tranan Martin, first sentence. This is the only thing I, I, I read because when I wanted to learn English, Someone told me, you have to study Renan Martin. Without studying Renan Martin, you can't learn English. That's the first thing I said. I, I read and then I closed the book. After that, I didn't make, you know, I couldn't understand anything in that. What is a sentence? Sentence is a collection of words making sense. It's a collection of words. And the collection of words should make sense. Proper sense, understood that is. Grammar you have to study. If you don't have studied grammar, then out. So you got to study grammar. Vyakarana Shastra to be studied. Next. So first one, Niruttam or Nigandir, we call it as. You have to study. Then you have to study Vyakarana. Then that fellow will be taught to study the Tarka Shastra. Right? Tarka, the what we are studying now is a is a portion of that. You have to study logic. Then you have to study literature. And then you have to study tattvas, philosophy. So first, dictionary. So first thing what you have to do, sir, by Chambers Dictionary. Read Chambers Dictionary first. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. And then, Renan Martin. And then, Logic. And then, Literature. Then, Philosophy. What are we doing? None of these things we studied. Straight we jump into Philosophy. And then we go back. It's like after you know studying MSc, you go back to sixth standard syllabus. You know, it is something like that. You know, what to do? You know, that's why you have to go back and study and come back again. But it's not necessary that you need that much details, but more the detail you have, better the depth of your understanding is. Remember, in the in the detailing alone, the depth is. You can't bypass the detailing and get, to, get, get on to the depth of understanding of what they are trying to communicate. So the, this four means is the four essential means. Primary is, is the four. Everything is built around this four only. This, the entire philosophy is built around there's four ways of gaining knowledge. So the what is this means of knowledge is called pramana in Sanskrit. Pramana is, is the valid means of gaining knowledge. Prama, karanam, pramanam. That which causes Prama, Prama means knowledge. That which causes knowledge, right knowledge, understood, is called Pramana, 
is called the valid means of gaining knowledge. And what he is going to be explaining here is, how are you to gain that knowledge of the fourth state? There are four methods. Now you got to see with which you can gain knowledge. Which is a valid way to gain knowledge. Now here you need to understand one essential factor in this pramana study. These are all you know preliminary. So these things we should have covered already before getting into what are the four. Now, when you are studying these pramanas, you need to remember what was established or the knowledge that you have gained through one pramana cannot be validated or invalidated through another pramana. Again, I'll give example, it become easy. Okay. But understand the concept first. In this pramana study, what you need to remember first before getting into the technicalities of what is a pramana, what is a prameya, what is a pramata, what is you know prama, all that. You know, is, a, is the pramata is the one who is gaining knowledge, the knower, the knower, using the right means, gains the knowledge of the object. So there is a knower, there is a means, knowledge, object of knowledge. That four. There is a clarification, there is a definition, there is a restrictions for all that. This is the study here. Now we don't have to go into that details alone. But one thing you have to remember here is this. That is, what you get to know the knowledge that is established or gained using one means, one pramana, cannot be validated by another pramana, nor invalidated by another pramana. For example, through eyes, you gain the knowledge of a color. Okay. What is the color of the cloth? Right. Yellow color. Your eyes, you see that and say, ah, so this is yellow color. Okay. Now, to verify whether this is yellow or not, you cannot be employing your tongue. You can't ask the tongue, hey tongue, just check. Mr. I is saying it is yellow. I, I don't know whether he is speaking properly. I don't trust that fellow. Can you just check and let me know whether it is actually yellow or not? It is not possible. When your tongue says it is spicy, it is sweet, you cannot ask your ears to verify that. Nor your ear can come and say, I don't think it is spicy. Your ear cannot validate or invalidate what your nose says, your eye says, etc. This is very important. Okay. So how will you get to know whether your eye says it is yellow color? That's a different equation. That's the study of the logic. So here Pratyaksha is very, very simple way of gaining knowledge. What is it, sir? You see, you understand. You see there is a color and form through your eyes. Through nose, you get various smell. Through tongue, you get various things, all this. But then, 
when you probe a little do you get complete knowledge of is it possible employing the senses can you get complete knowledge of the things how reliable your senses are to give you the right knowledge because we have seen that already knowledge means it should be a right knowledge what is the right knowledge right knowledge is you understand the thing as the thing is you understand the rope as a rope then you have the knowledge of the rope if you understand the rope as something other than the rope that is wrong knowledge that is called ignorance ignorance of what ignorance of rope so you don't know rope so your eyes ears nose tongue skin are they how complete how reliable are they to give you knowledge they say no no there is a problem what is a problem the employment of the senses there is a problem there therefore we have to go to other means of gaining knowledge you're all with me why do you have to go to something else why not gain the knowledge of and before that you need to go ask one fundamental question now in vedanta what is the knowledge that we are attempting to gain that you need to establish first right now without establishing that we cannot we cannot move further in vedanta we are trying to a, a student is attempting to gain the knowledge of what depending upon what you want to gain only then which is the valid means will come into picture is it not we are studying little tough for portion only right it's not tough actually but uh, it'll appear like that okay so you need to cooperate a bit you need to understand the text is getting heavier hmm? it is it will gain little weight the next chapter will look little lighter you know something lighter will come but this is a heavy chapter till you digest that we will give the next chapter which will be little lighter by the time you say this is lighter suddenly you go to the first, next chapter will become very heavy again renunciation you are very heavy ha is you know too much it is then immediately meditation is okay okay ha that we can connect to ha by the time you say ha yeah it looks so simple vedanta looks so easy state of enlightenment finished you know whole thing goes over board then go to the chapter is better we can skip it here anyway you will not understand a word of that but anyway since it is there we will study but that's how he has designed the text the text design is like that very little little you know he'll take you it look okay 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 and suddenly it gets so heavy you know and then i guess a joke we have in tamil you know teli vachi teli vachi adikirudu the mob you know will corner one guy and they'll keep hitting him bashing that fellow and suddenly one fellow will come and say stop 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 and give him you know some soda and all that you know give him and you know revive him he will come back to normalcy and all that then he will ask him are you are you in senses now he says yeah yeah i'm okay now and all that then he will say now start hitting him again so hey why are you doing it man 
Because if I hit you when you are unconscious, will you feel the pain? No, no. So therefore what? First, we'll revive you. Back. Olden days, they used to do it actually. Because, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, Greeks, Romans and all, when they have to torture, they'll give lashes. They'll give 100 lashes. A hundred lashes, he, he can't survive. They'll faint. They'll bleeding. You know. They bleed and faint. Then what they do is they take him to the hospital, treat him, apply balm and apply medicine and all those things and give him food, revive his health, he will get back. Now they'll bring that fellow back. Now 26 start. Uh, 26, 27. They, then by the time 40 comes, you will collapse again. Again what? Revive. This is exactly what he is doing. Torture only. Still heavy only, but what to do? You have to you know, take it. That's how the text is designed. Design is like that. It will heavy and then it goes okay. And then it again, again. Thus, you build your stamina. That intellectual stamina is getting built here. So, of the four, now he is giving four options are there. Pratyaksha is there, Anumana is there, Upamana is there, Agama is there. Now we need to know which one you have to be using. Which is the best? Which is the right one? That depends on what you want to gain knowledge of. Uh, if you want to see the color, if you want to know the color of the fruit, you need to employ what? Eyes. If you want to know the smell of the fruit, you have to employ the tongue. You have to, I'm sorry, nose. Fruit in a state that we are eating now. No. That's what you're supposed to do. Like they say, wine. First, you see the color of wine. And then you are supposed to smell it. Only then you should drink. Now, beer run, don't try. It is only for you know, wine. Old monk. Old mantra, don't smell. Close your nose and drink. <laughs> if you want to know the smell of it, you need to employ nose only. So which means that you are going to adopt depends on what knowledge you want to gain. So the object of knowledge will define, will decide which is the valid means? Remember this in the background. Okay. We are studying the subject Vedanta. Right. Through the study of Vedanta, what is that knowledge that we are trying to gain? We are trying to gain the knowledge of what? Then we can decide which is the valid means? Which is the best way to gain that knowledge? Now we have four options. There are four roads. Which road you have to take will depend on what? Not depend on the beauty of the road. Depends on where you want to go. Unless you define where you want to go, we cannot be saying which route to take. Now, Vedanta gives four roots. In that, the basic one, the fundamental one you have is Pratyaksha. You see, employing your senses. See, when I say, I am including all the five, okay? Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. All that is included here. So, employing the senses, whatever knowledge you gain, that is called protection. 
purely through senses. Now they ask the question, if senses can give the complete knowledge, then you don't have to go for any other thing. You can rely only on the senses for everything. But the problem is what? You cannot rely on the senses because senses itself can be defective. One, the problem with reference to senses is the scope is very limited here or the application of senses to gain knowledge. Because the sense itself is limited. Also, the senses can be defective. And also, it depends on the external circumstance. The application of senses, it's not complete. Knowledge, for you to gain the knowledge using the senses, it is not complete knowledge you get. It is incomplete knowledge. And also the senses are limited. Also the senses can be defective. Also the senses are depending on the external things. Simple. You see, you suddenly light goes off, let's say. What will happen to your vision? Whatever you are seeing. Or suddenly someone flashes the light directly to your eyes. Right? The availability of the intensity of light varies what your eye sees, isn't it? So, the knowledge that you can gain employing your senses has so many doshas, so many defects. To offset these defects only, we employ other means. That incompleteness that you are getting, the defects that you are having, the void that is created by the senses, the knowledge received through the senses is not complete. There is some pockets. It's incomplete. It is it's having very many defects. So, to complete that incompleteness and to offset the defects only, all other means of knowledge comes into picture. The next one that we go for is using inference. We'll deal more in detail in the next class. Okay, I'm just giving the basic idea now. Right. Now, Pratyaksha we have seen little. Not in detail, but in little we have seen. Basic understanding about the Pramanas and Pratyaksha. Anumana is inference. Famous example. Every All of you would have heard this. You see at a distance smoke. You infer there is fire. Even though you have not seen fire. You have seen only smoke. Your eye sees only smoke. But you gain the knowledge of the presence of fire. How did you gain that knowledge? Definitely not using the senses, not through your eyes. So, that is called inference. That method of gaining knowledge is called inference. Then you have the third one, that is comparison. Upamana. Upamana is you compare the similarities, the similarities 
of a put it simple like this equation wise if you put a equals b a equals c now we infer what 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 we understand uh, b is in c so the similar the knowledge of a's similarity to b is gained from the perception of b similarities to a this is the definition of upama comparison example immediately we all understand it what is it my beloved space is like moon then what is it comparison i know moon i don't know this beloved space right so he says my beloved space is like moon i am not having the knowledge of this beloved space but i have the knowledge of the properties of moon therefore what i do i take the properties of moon and certain properties of his beloved space projected there and understand how his beloved space must be it is so cool it is such a pleasant place pleasure you know pleasant thing to keep on looking at moon there are few things in life you know which are very very you can go on looking at it you never get bored moon elephant you know the dog alone you can't keep on looking at even if you have that pet right now look at him and then you dismiss but elephant you can go on looking you will never get bored elephant similarly ocean you know see you know see the beach and see the you know waves coming and lashing the shore so nice to see you can keep on you never get bored like that his beloved space is like that but you will never get bored he never gets bored looking at that knowledge i gain that's called comparison then you have the fourth one called agama tradition now tradition don't immediately say in our family we do like this that's not what is referred to as a tradition like you say in karnataka when they give this tampola you know they say sit sit they say so it is a tradition here tradition is you have to sit in the uh, this one you know you have to sit and we have to stand and give you in in, uh, in chennai you go there it's other way around now you are not supposed to sit when they are receiving tampola you stand up and take uh, and they are giving now this is not what is referred as agama here agama tradition when you say don't immediately take it there it means the teachings of the masters that's called agama the tradition so you have four means of knowledge which is the valid one for you to gain the knowledge of the fourth state of consciousness because the topic the subject of vedanta is to give you the knowledge of the truth reality brahman god self pure consciousness if you have to gain the knowledge of the self god then which one you are supposed to employ how far this means will help you how long it will take you like you have to go there this bus goes only up to hosur then what you can do next bus you take this bus goes up to vellore then the fellow say this bus goes up to shivaliputur that's all this bus goes to chennai the bus going to chennai will pass through hosur vellur sivaliputur all that will come okay 
now we have four things of the four which is the best one he says he will say that right he will say the agama is the best one is the complete one is the one which will take you to chennai i mean the example okay this bus so board the bus chennai similar board the bus agama so first three is not so all other means which are all just the subsets of these things all that is included so which means if you have to gain the knowledge of the self god brahman you have to rely only on agama shabda other things will not take you as far as agama will take so those who are not having access to that what they have to do okay first let me go right up to first let me board the bus and go to osur let me get out of this karnataka get into tamil nadu first and then i'll see something or i'll go right up to sivaliputu and then let's see you know i'll take a lift and go also i may walk also from there some will manage but first let me go so like that you can use the other three things but they will not be complete they will not give you that real knowledge of the self which is the purpose for which we are studying so if you are going to be employing the means he says first three and all the subsets of the three will not be communicating will not give you then what will give you is only this tradition now you got to remember the three, the first point what is it sir what is established what is communicated through one pramana cannot be validated nor invalidated so what shabda says what agama gives that knowledge cannot be validated or invalidated employing reasoning employing comparison employing protection therefore can open it says adeva brahmatvam viddhi nedam yadidam upasate not what you are seeking through these things man what you are seeking gaining knowledge through pratyaksha what the knowledge that you are gaining through inference what the knowledge that you are gaining through upamanam all this is not complete it's all incomplete that is not brahman it is beyond that then how do i gain that knowledge shabda agama is the way to gain that knowledge we'll get into the text next week thank you